Good morning. Morning. Uh, it looks like it's just the two of us today. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not easy. Uh, in case we haven't, I don't think I've met you, David. No, uh, David Custer. I'm with uh, with Comcast. So oh, awesome, easy. awesome, awesome. Yeah, no, I, I I have like, well, I haven't replied to the email, um, okay. but welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, right. it, it's it's open, and I and I just need to to do that. Um, you know, I had a question for you guys that are like, so the question is you'd ask about the um, what seeks to join. For myself, I you know, brought my problems to the group and said, this is the types of things that I was trying to solve and then really kind of figured out what was next from there. Um, the interoperability seek, of course, is something that was relaunched, trying to figure out like, hey, we've got the CD events kind of model. Um, what are the other types of things that we can do with it? But what are the kind of things that you guys are looking to solve? Um, sure. So let's see. One of the things that's always interesting at Comcast is the diversity of solutions and approaches that are applied, right? Mm -hmm. And we've got 8,000 developers, 10,000, I forget exactly. Um, you know, a lot of companies have been purchased in there. There's just you know, a lot of different things that are being done. Um, in terms of CD, we've got concourses used as our primary CI platform. Um, and we're looking, we're starting to introduce Octopus Deploy for, for CD. Um, so we've got about half the teams using Concourse. Um, so one of the things that I tend to focus on more is kind of best practices around that and, and what to do. And I think there is a best practices SIG, if I remember, mm -hmm. um, which I had looked at kind of a while ago. Um, so we're, we're in an effort now to get kind of the rest of the, the people that um, either either apps that aren't using CI/CD or teams, for instance, that aren't um, to get them on that journey. Uh, you know, try to lower the cognitive load, reduce friction, uh, make a lot of those things easier overall. For instance, um, okay. I'm specifically, and we've we've got a DevX group that's been stood up to try mm -hmm. to make you know all of that um, easier for developers. Right. So, right. Um, so, so I haven't looked a lot at this at the CD event stuff a little bit. Um, and part of the thing is for me is just to put this on my calendar and devote the time and start coming and you know make it a habit and say, okay, out of all the various competing priorities that are out there, let's let this one try to bubble up a little no. bit higher. Yeah, no, absolutely right. Um, I think the we're in a similar situation where there's a lot of different, you know, um, not just there's a lot of different like types of programming going on and a lot of different types of deployment targets. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys mostly focused on like just deploying the servers or is Compass like have like this need to, um, you know, like test apps on uh, mobile devices and things like that? I mean, are you standing those types of things up? Is that a part of your dev experience or like? I feel like the answer inside of Comcast is uh, it's like improv, right? It's yes and. Yep. Um, <laughs> so yes, I think somewhere someone is doing all of those things, right. um, you know, I come from more of a microservices background, so that tends to be my default way of, of thinking, but we've got, you know, teams that are using concourse to deploy things with Ansible, for instance, right. there is mobile testing going on, okay. um, you know, in the more kind of consumer oriented side of things, mm -hmm. um, so, so I mean, even it's just, it's just a, it is a discoverability problem to a certain extent, just finding out who's okay. doing what and how, how do you, you know, pull those best practices back together and share it with the team. And so you're not um, having to reinvent the wheel so often, right? right. right. And, and this is even only for me, it's inside of Comcast, not even including Sky and NBC Universal, right. which are also part of that, that same, you know, corporate umbrella. Right, right. And so are you, um, are you gated by the corporate umbrella or are you guys free to kind of do? I don't think so. Um, there's teams at Sky, for instance, that we talk to. Um, I don't have personal contact with anybody over at NBC, but there have been some internal conferences, for instance, where people have come mm -hmm. and presented. Um, I learned that, that roller coasters have CICD, for instance, which was rather mind boggling. <laughs> um, 
And I think is a great example. It's one of those things I want to use when somebody says, oh, we solve all the problems. I'll be like, right. what about roller coasters? Right. right. Does this address them? <laughs> right. That's a good one. I, I had no idea. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, interesting. Yeah. So I, I think the, the thing about the interoperability thing, I mean, it's literally we're trying to figure out, like, we've got all of these pieces, you know, how do they come together? How do we get the word out? How do we tell people about what's possible? And, you know, I have uh, members of my team that are focused on like implementing CD events and, and trying to solve some of the problems of like, okay, well, we've got this thing that does the eventing, but what can we use it for, right? It's great to say all these events happen, but how do we, we take it to the next level? And so um, one of the things that we noticed was that, oh, you know what? I need some way to kind of link all of these events together because my ecosystem is ginormous and I need to follow, you know, the CICD events from one end to the other. Um, and that's literally why I, I joined this particular SIG because that's that's part of the problem that we're, at least the things that we're trying to, to think through. Um, some of the things that came have come out of the meeting, not just you know from Melissa and I, but from other people that um, have attended, was this need to kind of, for especially for me, is to not focus on like okay, you have all these things you want to build something that makes it all interoperable, but what, where's the starting point? Like, what's the first step that someone can do to get involved? Um, and one of the things that came out of that was like, why don't we just start with like visualization, like telling people, okay, you can take these things and, and do this visualization. And so what I am hoping that the group can do is kind of create a blueprint for, for that and CD events um, and give some guidance on how to do the basics. Um, I am, you know, trying to bring uh, internally at, at Apple, trying to get more UI people involved and giving me some of that information about what's needed. Um, we had the basis for that and we started doing like a links proposal to the CD event spec um, to link the events together so you can start that visualization journey. But from there, you know, the next step is okay, you've got the visualization, what can come out of that next? And that's like, uh, you know, metrics and value stream, like, you know, what is, I'm building all of these features is it profitable, right? Or how, you know, how much time am I spending? How much does it cost me to actually manage and, and deal with these features? Um, and I see, we see that in the promise of CD events. So like you'll have that information to kind of start um, looking at it from, from that standpoint. And so, you know, if it's discoverability, um, what does that mean? For, from your perspective? Is this like, I am just the average developer. I just started my job. I want to know what all the tools are and how to find them. Or is it like system discoverability, system to system where, you know, you're not even aware that you need to talk to and communicate to these other things. And then, you know, those services can kind of be discovered by other services that uh, link into your CD, CI CD. Yeah, yeah well, I guess, so I think both of those are, are valid points about discoverability. When I'm talking about it, the way that I'm tending to think about it for where I am, is more the tools and techniques used, for instance. Okay. So you mentioned mobile testing. You know, mm -hmm. that would be one. Uh, we've got something internally where we try to break down, essentially, here's all the capabilities that might go into a CI CD pipeline, right? Here's all the different mm -hmm. kinds of testing you could do, the different kinds of security scanning, um, those sorts of things. So what are, you know, all of those capabilities, for instance, and then what are the ways to implement those that are, you know, either the best or sort of applicable for your situation that, you know, if you're testing on mobile devices, that's different than just calling a REST API, for instance. Um, and, and, you know, you can bubble that up to a high enough level to say, oh, it's just whatever you want to call it, integration tests or functional right. tests or something like that, right? But when you start to say, well, what does that really mean for the situation that I'm in? Right? Yeah. Then it gets much more yeah. dispersed and... <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of points in testing, and that's you know um, just on a personal level. Like that was one of the first things that I was involved with when I got to Apple ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Was like you know just making sure that people understood the difference in the test and where they actually go and what they were doing, and the difference between like oh just a unit test and performance test and an integration test and what the systems that are involved in putting that together. So in the you know the interest of just of the testing side of it. And the discoverability, is it the case that you're trying to get to a point where um, the person 
doing or building the task, all of the ancillary systems, like in the case of an integration task, is it like we're going to have a standalone environment that's going to do these integration tests? Or is the hope that, oh, I just need this much of the environment and I can kind of stand this up ephemerally and, you know, those tests get conducted and torn back down? Like, what's what are you trying to work towards in that kind of situation? Sure. Yeah. Right now, I would say really I'm not focused too much on testing in particular. Okay. Um, it's more around, I guess you could think of like static code analysis as a kind of testing. Okay. Um, but as a, a DevX group, how can we almost add some things in automatically for teams, right? And, and the kinds of tests that they're doing, we could say, here's a place that you can go to stand up a test environment or, you know, a stage or performance or whatever the case may be. But even before we get that, how can, you know, before we get to that point, um, how can we do things more in CI around making sure that artifact is really solid and doing security scanning, static mm -hmm. analysis, and, and all those sorts of things? And are there ways that we could not say, hey, hey, by the way, we identified here's this huge list of things that you really should do, and please go do all of them. But instead, here's stuff that we are hopefully just giving you, and you don't have to do much to really add it, right? Mm -hmm. um, there may still be understanding that's involved what does it mean when i get this kind of a result back from whatever that that tool is for instance mm -hmm. um so something like automating the testing i guess i'm sort of working through this a little bit more left to right in terms of thinking about ci stuff first and then getting into CD. Mm -hmm. um but but i guess that's where something like the cd events i'm, I'm curious about because we've we've talked a little bit about the idea of having something internally that would do more automatic onboarding for various things, right? Yeah. Setting up service accounts and, you know, mm -hmm. just onboard you to these tools and, and whatever it is. And instead of, again, here's this list of things you need to do, just, just press this button, right? And yeah. it goes and does it and whatever. And so with the CD events, what I had seen is it did feel a little more around either visualization or maybe ops is, I guess, in terms of like, what are the things happening in my pipeline? I'm wondering if cloud events is a little bit before that, where it, so it is cloud events, like a, it's related to CD events. Is that correct? Yes. No, they're based on each other. And I don't pay any attention to my facial expressions. I just, okay. you know, I thinking through like, oh, okay. You know, and that's my deep thought look. So okay. I, right. I apologize. I, I do <laughs> the same. Right. Okay. <laughs> hmm. uh, right. yeah so yeah they're they're definitely uh it, the the it was what it was based on right it was trying to keep that as close to cloud events as possible um when i guess what i am thinking through too is as i'm listening to you I was like oh okay this sounds like you know you want to get the s-bombs and then analyze like okay yeah there's a vulnerability in this particular package and you guys need to, to switch this out or something like that mm -hmm. um and i and i hear that a lot as i've gone through the different conferences especially the uh, cdf conferences um and seen some demos of that type of, of thing where you know it's analyzing the packages that are there and letting you know about the vulnerabilities and then, you know, creating the PRs that say, hey, boom, you can make that change and you, or, you know, push this button and it'll make the change for you, right? Because the PR is there. Um, and so that's what I was kind of hearing and what you were saying. And that was when you mentioned the cloud events, but I was already kind of frowned. So I apologize. Okay. Um, is that sound like where the, the types of analysis that you're, you're talking about, or is that like just line by line code, like the, you know, you're creating a vulnerability in the way that you're writing this code, um, not necessarily in the packages that uh, are included with the, with the greater application. Sure. So we've got um, different tools that do scanning for first party dependencies versus third party, right? So here's the, mm -hmm. the code that you've written, you know, is subject to SQL injection or whatever mm -hmm. um, you're pulling in. And this other one, it would be here, you're pulling in something that has a known vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those are all uh, different aspects. At the moment, we're not doing anything with SBOMs, but that's, you know, on the list that I'd like to, to get to as well. Um, okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But yes, it is, it is CD events is definitely based on, on cloud events. And I, I kind of try, um, yeah, it, it has this wide, wide scope of things that are available to it, because if you're just tracking an event, there's a lot that you can do with it and interpret from that. Um, 
for me personally, I'm a, a tool builder. I work on the uh, open source tool spinner. Um, so it's also like, oh, when I look at it, I see this ability to go, oh, I could actually use this to signal other systems to tell them, you know, where I am in, in a process and then they can take an action or tell me to take an action. Um, so it has the promise of interoperability to kind of link some of those things together. Um, the, 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 the issue then would become like, if you are doing these tests and these checks, is your need something like, okay, I, I, these things have been done. I want to create an event for that because I want to take an action beyond that event, or do I just want to be aware that it was done? And so that's the types of things that are happening directly in the SIG and where people are saying, okay, I need this type of event um, so that I can, you know, track it or, or, or account for it. Um, and I, at least from the, the, the people on my staff who are, who are, who are dealing with this, it's, there seems to be a lot of these signals that we're putting into place. And the greater question is, okay, now that they're all in place or they're all available to you, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to get out of that? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I hope that yeah, answered so. or? Sure. Okay. So so in terms of, I guess, CD events, is that something are people kind of extracting, say, Dora metrics from those things? You could, you definitely mm -hmm. can use it to do something like a Dora metric. Um, I, 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 my initial look at it was like last year, last August. Um, and that was one of the first things because of course, after you read the book, you're like, okay, how can I, how can I do this? How can I do this? Uh, and it looked like, yeah, if it makes all those events are available, then I'd be able to do that. But what, that was also why I needed to tie together like the whole span of things to start to do that process. So that's why we went into the leaks proposal. Uh, and so those, there are individual efforts that are going on in the CD events SIG that will definitely help you, you know, direct to that effort that, you know, the end product that you're talking about, uh, especially if you're trying to get to Dora metrics, because that, that is definitely one of the things that it helps solve. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you say, did you say the links proposal? Is that? Yeah. Oh, you know what? I can just put it. If. I got the notes up. <laughs> uh, did I not share my screen? And uh, sorry. And because it's just you and I, we're just, you know, just chatting, not really focusing on the agenda. Uh, so I will find. Sorry. Uh, give me just a second. Sorry. So what happened was the same kind of thing. Like I wanted to be able to start down the uh, the track of Dora metrics, or at least my staff wanted to be able to do that. Um, and actually work on. Mm -hmm. Um, but why? Okay. Uh, we seem to be running a tad bit slow today, but sorry, yeah, but... No worries. I'm gonna find it and uh. <laughs> Let me just ask Ben. That's the, probably the faster way to do this instead of going through my tons and tons of stuff. Mm -hmm. Bingo. See, just going to ask the right person. Uh, mm 
Okay. This is the links proposal. The concept essentially is how, given that we have the, the CD events themselves, how do we create a service that lets us tie them together and also scale for fan in and fan out? Because if you're building an application, of course, you're going to have many libraries within that application. Um, and so if you're you know, trying to get to a point where you're doing enterprise Dora metrics, it's going to be a lot of different groups and services involved in that final output. So how do I track all of the commits and, you know, all of the steps, all the testing uh, involved that I have events for in, in a reasonable fashion? And so the links proposal is based on Eiffel um, and it, kind of follows the the Eiffel model to say, okay, this is how you, you know, you have a service, a separate service that manages the links, and then and you have some metadata that goes with the events that says, okay, these are the links for these events. And then you go back and, and find those via the service, not necessarily um, via the individual events, because there is that issue of the fan outs and fan backing. So. Okay. All right. Um, and it, that is, from my perspective, at least at trying to do this across, you know, an enterprise at a very large scale, um, it helps us solve that problem. But if you're still, you know, doing very direct, simple, you want to start with just the pipeline metrics, then the CD events itself should be pretty straightforward to do. Okay. Yeah, I'll look through this. Okay. Um, and so there's definitely, you know, the, the, the thought work is being done and we're actually putting in the effort. It's just, you know, it's just trying to do that and stay active in the community, make all the meetings and, and hit all of the, the dot your eyes in this process. Um, the other thing that we've been talking about or thinking through is like, how do we get the word out? How do we get more people involved, um, to kind of get this deeper list of issues to work from and then find pieces that other people would want to contribute mm -hmm. on for the greater community because mm -hmm. it's easy to kind of walk into a space and say oh you guys are doing great work i want to consume it but really we're at a, a stage and a point where we're looking for people to share ideas and share thoughts and kind of you know do do some of the heavy lifting to kind mm -hmm. of get some of it done um because the 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 step that needs to happen that I am concerned with, especially with just starting at like a visualization point. It's great even if we do a visualization how to, someone needs to like build the example and say, okay, this is a usable example that works with CD events that you can then mm -hmm. visualize for the open source community. Um, and the setup of those projects is uh, hopefully what comes out of this SIG is just, you know, this SIG is really about thinking through like the other things that we want to get done and then trying to encourage the launch of actual activity to get those done. Okay. Yeah, great. This is, this is a great uh, introduction for sure. Um, right. I guess just again on the introduction note, you'd mentioned other SIGs and uh, like if I'm sure that there's, all this is on the, the CDF website, but are there others for anything that I've talked about? There's other ones that you would also, that would be complimentary, I guess, to this. Um, well, you mentioned the best practice SIG. I think the, the working with the CD events SIG is absolutely, you know, I, I definitely suggest that you do that. <laughs> um, I think as you begin to look at the CD events not just the proposal, but the event spec that they have so far. Um, there are there are a host of people who are coming, seeing the spec, and going, "I want to, I want to participate." Um, I think they were having conversations with like Open Telemetry, um, and so like 
being able to say, okay, this is what I need out of that is really the biggest thing that everyone's doing to help as these events are being proposed. Um, you really should, or it, I'm hoping that, um, you know, you, you take some time and kind of go, oh, okay, I see where you guys are going, but this is my use case and mm -hmm. I need to get to this place. And that's what really helps is that, you know, that one is moving forward, things are happening and most of the people that you know i'm aware of are trying to do a thing with it and the question is what is that thing is there something that's common use in that um you know um yeah i think that one is is really really important okay. well, that's that's great as well yeah do you guys um are you participating in any other like open source tooling um where you're actually actively contributing not a little bit, not like oh, I would like, right? Okay. Um, and it's something that we've we've talked about more, especially as we're using Concourse. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's something that we want to be more involved with. Like I know we're hiring for a position right now that's you know be more dedicated officially to that, as opposed to something that you do sort of on the side and sneak in yes. the corners, you know, where you've got the space. Yes. Um, so, and there have been things that have been open sourced out of Comcast, but in terms of, and again, I'm sure that there's places somewhere in Comcast, and, and there is stuff with, I think, RDK, um, which is, I don't know if I can tell you the acronym, but it's, I think, firmware that runs on set-top boxes and stuff that is a very active open source project, um, but that's not something that I'm you know, involved with, for instance, yeah. Um, yeah. so I suppose it's it's the yes and <laughs> answer again, um, but uh, Makes sense. Makes sense. And, you know, for us, it's, it is fairly new for, you know, Apple to be involved in uh, open source, I, you know, and being able to participate, especially for my team, it's a big part of our culture and I've made it a big part, part of our culture. Um, and so I'm always curious as we meet new people, it's like, is this something that you're already doing? Um, what projects are you participating in? You know, because uh, it helps too with even the concept of CD events, because that is another example of work that needs to be done to get it into other tools, right? It's one thing to say, oh, we have it, but then if the tools themselves don't support it, then um, yeah, that's really the basis for me asking. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um, any other questions or concerns or? Um, no, I don't think so. I think this gives me a great, a great basis. I mean, I, I was kind of joining or planning to join just to to, to listen, yeah, and yeah, listen yeah, and, yeah. and see. So this is uh, this is much better than I was. Much more personalized <laughs> attention than I was expecting. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm glad that I, I could have the conversation. Um, and you know, apologize for not responding to the email yet. Um, oh, but this yeah. saves me the. <laughs> so I appreciate that too, having the, the chance to actually talk to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, this is great because this is what helps. I mean, definitely the conferences and like meeting the people and being able to see that they're real people on the other side of this that are solving problems have been super helpful for me too, especially in motivating my guys to understand like, we're not just trying to solve our problems, we're solving community problems. Um, and to think about that as we're actually building things like, okay, we, we have our own internal needs, the things, goals that we wanna do, but how can we structure this in a way that we can contribute you know, part of that base and then still do the things that we want to do. And that mindset has really, really um, set us up to be effective in the way that we contribute to the community. Cool. So I guess on that note, let me just ask, um, where have you maybe struck the balance in those things? Because there's a tool we're working on, for instance, now where we could say, well, we could externalize all of our internal custom stuff. Mm -hmm. That Then it could be open source, but it feels like at the moment that's putting the cart before the horse a mm -hmm. little bit. Right. So for me, the the issue was like I said, I work on the the Spinnaker um, project. Spinnaker was an is an older um, product. Um, it had a lot of tech debt when I joined the team, um, and I have a very small team, and so I either had to figure out a way to clean up all the tech debt and get my list of deliverables done, uh, or you know. Yeah, nothing, right? And so uh, by going into the community, what I was able to do was find a lot of other companies that were dealing with the same problems and we split the work. And so there's that core work that is, okay, 
how can we do things that everybody's interested in you have the conversations and you split up the core work and so you're getting pieces from other teams and my roadmap is planned accordingly for those pieces to come in and you're also giving something back to them and so it's that piece of it that has helped me keep my team small um and other teams when we like um we delivered a feature that basically, you know, shrinks the pipeline size and memory. Um, but we focused on what was important to us. But when we put it into the open source community, people began to work on it and, you know, found bugs, came up with fixes, made design changes and said, oh, wouldn't this be better? And so that helps us because it's also work that I don't have to do. And so it's, it is drawing that line of in the communal space, you know, what can I what can I encourage other people to help me with? <laughs> as well as, you know, what am I going to get out of it to keep delivering my roadmap internally? Um, but you you do have to give to get. I mean, that's that's the core of life, right? Everybody, everybody wants to get stuff and everybody gives to get something. And so um, you know, that trade is actually happening anyway, but making it in a conscious way that is like, okay, how can we do this and help the community? Um, encourages the community to want to help us back. Yeah. And, and doing it, the other, the main thing that I've found in by committing to the work, when I go back to the group and say, Hey, what about this thing? Everybody goes, yeah, sure. Let's figure out how to do that because you're contributing and you're helping them. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's definitely very relevant for, for concourse where it's already an open source project. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I was thinking about something that's like new to the community, right? If you put it out there, but, mm -hmm. but I think, I think that makes total sense for what, uh, what you're doing. No, and it's the valuable. same thing if it's new to the community though, right? Because you're, if you have a base idea, you can say, okay, this is the structure of the interfaces, you know, Hey, community go wild. And then you can take your own direction. And, and it's really just programming to those interfaces mm -hmm. um, after that. And then, you know, other people can, can, can take it somewhere and they'll find things that you probably weren't, well, I'm not gonna say that you probably weren't thinking about because I don't know, you know, but in probably. my case- I think that's a safe assumption. Okay. It's always, yeah, <laughs> there's always things you're not thinking about. Yeah, yeah, because you've got your own focuses and your own deliverables um, and you're gonna, you know, I, yeah, I, the, the internal pressure to do a thing is always there, um, but taking that step back. Uh, and, and I also went out when I was adding people to my team and looked for people who were, we're familiar with working in the open source community uh, or we're eager to do that. Uh, and so I was very fortunate in, in hiring someone who really understood the community well mm -hmm. and could then say, oh yeah, no, if we only do this part and put it out there, things will happen. And you're a little skeptical at first and then you do it and it's exactly what happens, uh, you know. Um, but the the need to build new things with this technology is still going to be there right and that's what circling all the way back that's part of what why i wanted to be involved with this thing because it's like hey cd events needs this thing to kind of support it like how can we get that started in the community um you know, because it, it it does benefit the entire community for sure yeah, yeah great all right david it is super awesome to meet you uh, I hope to see more of you, you know, and um, um, if if you need anything, I am in the, uh, have you joined the CD event Slack? Yes. I'm sorry, the CDF Slack. The yes. Delivery panel. Okay, awesome. I'm in the interoperability Sig? channel. All right, awesome. Sig interoperability, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. So if you need anything, feel free to just reach out to me directly as well. Mm -hmm. Um one way or another, I'm always working on this stuff. Um, it's just, it is what it is, right? Sure. Okay. No. All right. Yeah, and this is this is great to think about, yeah, leveraging community, just like you said, right? But how can we yeah. accomplish things, but also everyone, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. So yeah. Yeah. No, and it's and it's 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 interesting because it really is like that. And at first I was like, I don't know about this. You know, because we we tend to work behind very closed doors. So it's like, oh no, we got this. And yeah, no, it's been really, 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 really great in the Spinnaker community and in the CDF so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, you have a good thanks one, sir. For, yeah, thanks so much, you too. Mm -hmm. So.